this. It went on my feet. I can't even tell you how gross this is. I hate these things. There's one in my hair. So let's talk about how devastating it is for anybody in agriculture in Alberta that is dealing with what's going on up here. So we've had some pretty bad droughts um, where we are located in northern Alberta. We have not had the rain like the rest of the province has. It keeps missing us. And uh, so it's pretty devastating. We've had plagues of grasshoppers and in the past I have sprayed before and it doesn't work unless all of my neighbors spray and I'm not doing that I'm trying different methods to try and eliminate this the damage looks awful and it looks like it looks bad but it's not as bad as it, it could be the plants outside are definitely suffering more than the ones inside because plants outside are not getting the adequate amount of moisture like my poor still be here that got chewed up really badly. My crops are basically it's a write off outside. I'm not banking on having much, but I'm just salvaging what I can. I'm not sure if you can see all these hoppers when I'm walking. Watch what happens. They are really, really bad. This is not even as bad as they were. I've let the chickens in here go full fo force, including the meat birds, and they have been eliminating these, but um, it could be much worse. We did have a rain that knocked down some of them, but the rain didn't really add up to much. They even started to eat my peppers. Um, what happens is they go into where I have my protective netting because then the birds, like my chickens, can't uh, prey on them. So they have started to go into my netting where it's safe, which is a problem. Um, so now I'm starting to remove my netting, but so far I've still have it on my peppers and they're actually doing well. Believe it or not, we've had a lot of nights where it's been about four degrees Celsius and these still have been producing. I'm really happy with my peppers this year and I'm hoping to just have enough for fresh eating since I still have many preserved in the freezer from last season still. So we're good on the peppers. Um, I'm really looking forward to being able to have just fresh ingredients, but these are all I have. Um, the rest of my stuff has been taken out. I have no other vegetables growing. It's been taken out by grasshoppers and disease from the grasshoppers. So look at my zinnia. Um, I planted zinnia and they were actually doing really well and the grasshoppers chewed them right off. Well, I may as well give you a quick tour before they eat it all. Lilies are doing okay in here. I still have some flowering kale. I've been picking it, harvesting it. Basically all of my violas and stuff, they've been pretty well eaten, taken out. I'm gonna probably give some water in here. Maybe they'll revive. The um, syrinth has been, I've been harvesting it and using quite a bit of it. Um, my snapdragons, I've had to basically, I've been cutting them. Um, and disposing of them because I do have thrips in here and also a lot of grasshopper damage. So they're just not thriving the way I wanted them to. I did have some calla lilies bloom in our pots back there. Um, and I see we have some rubecchia trying to bud up, but the grasshoppers really like rubecchia, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna get any stems. They also really, really like the yarrow, so I'm struggling with that but it's starting to really come in. Um, we've got a little harvest from here, more snapdragons. The Lysianthus, this, this variety, I can't remember the variety. Um, it is really short, but I'm still using it. I'm using them in teacup arrangements. Um, they, they open up beautifully and they have super head like blooms. The blooms are beautiful. So I've been using them, but they're short, 
so yeah anyway I have lots of volunteer tomatoes which I'm letting them grow because I want to be able to actually be able to harvest something um, from this space it does need a lot of water in here but uh, I just flowered flower dusted so I'm trying to kill off some of the grasshoppers that are in here which I want them to eat the flower I have more Roseanne Brown blooming of them going here with some tomatoes <laughs> and um, also snapdragons interplanted together so yeah that's what I have going there the next variety oh well I have some sunflowers they're basically all written off because they've been eaten so badly by grasshoppers um, I have some volunteer tomatoes over there and I still have an enemy coming pushing blooms so I haven't dug them but I'm probably going to dig out my ranunculus from down here soon as well but let's just look at some more of these lisianthus these are starting to bloom as well I can't remember the variety of this one but it's like a buttercream yellow they're really pretty with lots of volunteer tomatoes of course and these Lizzie's are beautiful as well. They're getting nice and tall. With some more volunteer tomatoes. <laughs> some more Lizzianthus. More Lizzianthus. This stuff is starting to bud. of Ireland I've been harvesting this is sweet Annie and then I have Lizianthus in and the volunteer tomatoes in here more yarrow more stock here. Verbena. The grasshoppers really like verbena. They like to eat it. It's a host plant it seems. As you can see they eat the tops right off of it. I also have Dara. They also really like Dara. Nigella. These are sun balls. Scabiosa. Sunflowers. Anemone. Annual phlox. Carnations. Oh, we have an opening here that's been chewed off, but. <laughs> they really, really like Sweet William and they really like Adacia. The grasshoppers do. So I haven't really been able to get much off of them because they've been eating them. So yeah, my garlic has been pushing scapes. So I'm probably going to harvest the scapes so I have something salvaged out of this greenhouse this summer. Um, and I've been using the garlic for cooking. We have lots of beautiful um, status that's been, I've been harvesting quite a bit off of here. The yellow is pretty too. And I have some, oop, I have some ba uh, bachelor buttons growing in here as well. 
still have some flour and kale some really pretty yarrow this is from last year i've harvested twice off of these and they just have been pushing beautiful blooms i'm really happy with it what kind of bug is that one i've never seen that one before let me see if i can get a close up what is it you guys i've never seen one like that before i noticed with these heat waves that we've been having we're seeing insects that we've never seen before our like regular temperatures We've been hitting like 27 degrees almost every day so de de degree Celsius. And that is just absurd for our climate. We don't, we're not built for that, but the RO seems to be handling it okay. I had some roses in here and the chickens wouldn't leave them alone. So I dug them up and put them in the greenhouse. I forgot to show you, but there's not much to see. They're just, they were just put in there. Um, not much growth on them. What else do we have? My dahlias, ugh. Yeah, everything that's been planted has been eaten, so I'm not doing any more planting until the grasshoppers are gone. These are dahlias, and I'm gonna try to get all the grasshoppers off of them and cover them um, so they're left alone. Have some more syrinth. I also have some more sweet annie and then blue plurum has made a comeback so i've harvested off of these twice and they're actually starting to grow a second flush so i'm really happy with the blue plurum i also ugh, <laughs> um my irises are not very happy the sedum is doing okay so it's starting to produce <sighs> lilies lilies it's producing so weeds I haven't weeded that at all um I have a few lupins that survived the chickens not a lot but a few of them and then these sedum here, they're doing a comeback as well. I don't know the variety of them. I have some liatris that's coming up and the delphiniums are starting to bloom, which is so bizarre because they just seem so late, but it's actually, I don't know, it's on time. It's just that we've been growing since, we've had, we have had such warm weather, it's just bizarre. They're just really pretty though this year. Very tall, very tall plants. Strong stems. This is more yarrow that was perennial. This one's making a comeback. Oh, I did have one peony bloom, but it's all gone now. This is a disaster. I don't know what happened. I didn't, I'm not even weeding it. I'm just leaving it alone. I'm not touching anything in the garden lately. I've been too busy. I've kind of just too much energy going into things that are pointless. Um, I don't I don't have energy to deal with it, so I'm just letting it go. My very weedy yard. Uh, <laughs> I haven't had a chance to cut the grass back here yet, but they basically ate, the grasshoppers ate my crop back here, so. As you can see, this is yarrow. They stripped it down to nothing. They ate it all. I do have some poppies growing back here, but it's basically like this. I hadn't planted anything in here. Um, I don't know if you can see. Can you see them? I don't know if you can. This is just weeds. I haven't weeded it or nothing. I'm just leaving it right now. We haven't had any moisture, so I can't really do much. The, these are the pods um, for my tulips. And I haven't done much here. I'm gonna come through and weed this on a day after we've had some moisture. also pretty 
producing scapes back here. There's some sunflowers that are bearing the pressure. These are flocks, but the dogwood is doing okay and the hydrangeas are doing okay. And these here are tomatoes that we planted together. I need to trellis them, but they're starting to bud. I need to get them trellised. Look at them. tomatoes that we planted that are determinants. They're also producing. Very golds that we planted. The grasshoppers ate them to stubs. Kinda. <laughs> These marigolds, they're starting to eat them. I, be, I haven't weeded them, I've been leaving them, but I also have stink bugs, or uh, tarnished plant bugs in here really bad. So I took the netting off so that the guineas could get them because they are eating them. We'll see. I'm not expecting anything. This year, I'm basically calling it a complete loss. Um, it's not worth the effort from my scale of farming, so I'm just letting it go. Uh, so yeah, the, these sunflowers are definitely getting chewed up pretty bad. But I will be able to harvest some of them. And then... Succession here that I planted. That's the second succession, and it's the third succession is blooming. The second one is not. Not that I can see. It could be, but I just don't see it. But for right now, there's nothing. Nothing. The lilies are starting to bloom from here. They are the variety called T Tiny Looks, Tiny Moon. So yeah, popping on them too. So am I going to give up on flower farming? The answer is no, and I'm going to still share this journey. Even though I've had a lot of devastating outcomes <laughs> and the climate seems to want to be against me the whole however many years, it is a learning experience. I've done a lot of experimentation and I am trying to go more in a regenerative egg direction and I've definitely seen some results already this year. And as I continue to grow and learn, I'm just going to keep adapting more and more of these practices and eventually i think that even if we do have this bug pressure eventually i don't think we're going to have such devastating losses i did notice the plants that didn't have a lot of the microbial beneficial bacteria and fungi or fungi available to it are the ones that are being um, destroyed and the ones where i do have a lot of the beneficial bacteria and fungi, they have been um, having more 
immunity. And so that just shows me that there's something to fixing the soil and I'm going to continue to work on it. I also learned that moisture is a very big um, thing that I need to work on next year and I'm going to be installing drip tape into all of my beds. I'm no longer going to be overhead watering because it causes so many issues including um, having to add flour or any type of powders into the greenhouse that does help eliminate some of the hopper pressure and it also makes it a little easier on me that I can just have a drip system grow going and turn on a tap instead of spending all this time watering by hand but it will eventually I will have some successes and you know what we haven't had all failures I've had some beautiful results I've been harvesting amazing stems and yes it might be a little bit of work that I do have to wash them off and take a little bit of time for cleaning them I still would rather have grasshopper poop on some of my stems that are unbitten untouched by the destruction of them and just rinse the the organic matter off instead of handling chemicals that are really toxic the chemical um method is something that i'm not saying is the wrong way it's just not the way for me i have so many beneficial insects and it's important to me and I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to keep learning and I'm going to keep sharing and I'm going to keep growing. This little guy here is very important to me. So some of the victories are we actually had done some projects. We had taken some of our florals and supplied them to our 2023 graduating <laughs> class and I made little posies, little mini posies. So each of these were handed out to the parents. And as you can see, I have some stock in there and some syrinth and just little odds and ends, a little bit of dogwood, some of the cloud grass. And I just wrapped them up and we dropped them off for the graduating class. They were a hit and they smelled so, so beautiful. It was just a little project that I did from the Hotchkiss Flower Farm to our graduating class of 2023. So I'm hoping that maybe next year we can do it again and make it a little bit of a tradition around here. So they turned out really well. I just put them into solo cups with a little bit of water on them and they stay nice, nice and hydrated and it worked great. There was no two that were the same. It was a variety of whatever I had on hand. And uh, sometimes that works out better. It is Lizzie the season has begun on the Hotchkiss Flower Farm. And I'm very, very excited. The first ones in bloom are the Roseanne Brown, which are these guys. And they get much darker and they have various different color um, that they turn into and then this is a flare variety called deep blue i think is called um they're very stunning so very excited to have these on the go here on the farm and yarrow season don't know what he's planning but it looks like an ambush what are you doing hmm poop did you get him did you did you the first mini carnation completely destroyed by bugs yep looks like we're doing some major pest control tarnished plant bugs and thrips fun times all that work the truth about flower farming is that pests will always win for every handful that I threw out, I did deliver to the florist. So it was a win-win week. Only a 50% chance of disappointment was on the horizon, but I made sure to take some time to make myself some pretty things and get creative. And I'm no florist, but 
I like it. I dig it. I think I could do this more often. I definitely enjoyed it. Not only this, we had a lily. It was so pretty. How to get rid of grasshoppers in a greenhouse like mine. This is what I do. I have flour and a fan and I just create mist or a dusting. And grasshoppers, when they consume flour, it, they can't survive it. And so it doesn't get rid of all of them because you're continuously going to have more moving in but it definitely does help and it protects the plants because there'll be a little dusting of flour all over them and they won't want to eat it or they die if they do eat it. So that's how we roll. It may or may not have went to war with grasshoppers today. Some other things that have happened this past week, well, a couple weeks. Um, well, Chaz has been playing lots of baseball, and he also gave himself a shiner. We've been on the road a lot and seen lots of beautiful wildlife. It's still pretty smoky here. But when we are home, I do still enjoy the garden. I wish I had more vegetables. And... Maybe I'll figure something out. Okay, my ranunculus is starting to bloom under the shade cover, but here is the dilemma. I want to get in there and harvest them, but I can't take off my shade cloth because when I do, all of these grasshoppers get inside, so I have to wait to harvest till the sun goes down and there's no hoppers on here, so I can keep them out and they're not going to eat my beautiful ranunculus, which they already tried to eat them. I don't know if I can get in there and see what they look like. They've already been eating on them. So I gotta wait. They're already trying to eat on my flowers that I just harvested. It is so gross. Well, thank you for sticking around, even though we've been on the road a lot and haven't been sharing a lot of content. Chaz is having the summer of his life, and we appreciate you for watching our videos and being here to support us. Even though it's been raining all over else in the province, we haven't got any at home. But it is nice to get these little breaks and um, see the, the devastation, but also see the rain and uh, get, see the kids get muddy. Also, Chaz had his grade nine grad and we're really proud of him and time is just flying by so fast. So thank you for being on this journey with us. We really appreciate sharing all of these beautiful things that we're able to grow and create together. And we appreciate you.
Maybe I can rent it out or something. Started a fact. 